In this video I am going to show you how to set up an Ubuntu 20.04 LTS virtual machine in Parallels for Mac 15. So I've got a couple set up here already but we're not going to be taking a look at those. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit the plus here up in the corner and we're going to say okay so installation assistant off we go. Now you may be tempted to go down here and click on this download Ubuntu Linux and do it there. As of recording of this video, currently that will install 18.04, which is not the version we want. So I've actually downloaded the ISO image. So we're going to say, OK, install from Windows or another OS from a DVD or image file. And then I'm going to go continue. The installation assistant here is going to scan my system and it's found a couple of different ISO files. Uh, we have the desktop version of 2004 and the server version. Right now for this video, I am going to say, OK, great. I want to use the 20.04 64-bit desktop version and hit continue. I downloaded the ISO file in case you're wondering from Ubuntu, the Ubuntu website. I always recommend going to the official website so that you know everything's good. It's going to ask me if I want to set up a Linux username and password here. I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I put got full name, got my username, and I'm just going to put a password in here just for the sake of this video, there we go, and hit continue. It's going to ask for a name. That's the name that appears on the list. Let me show you here. So it's this name that appears on the list here, right? So we're going to say Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. It's going to ask for a location on my machine. I'm happy to go there. It's going to give me an approximation of how much space is going to be used. I'm fine with that. I'm not going to create an LTS on my desktop which would just basically enable me to double click it and fire it up. I'm not going to do that, but I am going to hit the customized settings here before installation and it'll become apparent why when we get into those. So I'm going to hit create. It's going to just show me quickly here confirmation. These are the details out of the box. That's not what I want. So we're going to go to general here. I'm not going to put a description in. Don't care about that. Um, I do have the option here to change the name if I want to, which I'm fine with what I put in. I'm going to go over to options here. And let's just go through these quickly because some of these we need to change, some of them we don't. Um, start up and shut down manually is the way I prefer to have it set up. So I've got that there. Uh, optimization resource usage. I'm running this on a MacBook Pro 16 inch with 16 gig of RAM and an i9 processor. So I'm going to leave this at no limit because I've got plenty of available resources sharing. I'm not going to share. We'll go on back to this one though. I'm not going to change this one here. Applications. Um, you have the option if you're going to use coherence mode and that kind of thing to basically run the Linux applications right here on your Mac desktop if you want. It's going to look like just any other application. I'm not going to do that, so I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to say disable. And I'll explain why when we get to some of the other options. Full screen, just going to leave that alone. Picture in picture, going to leave that alone as well. Travel mode, going to leave it alone. More options. So on the more options, I'm going to sync my time from the Mac. That's fine. I'm not going to share the Mac clipboard. I'll get to that in a second as to why. Um, Update parallel tools automatically. The tools that get installed that give us the performance boost that we need inside the VM you know, comes from the parallel tools. I do want those to stay updated automatically, and I'm going to leave those at that. Let's go over to the hardware. So starting off with the CPU and memory, uh, if I click on here, it's going to recommend two processors, which is fine. I can go all the way up to 16 on this machine. I have 16 cores, but I'm just going to use two. It says two gigabytes of RAM. Um, I'm going to push that up just a little bit to three. Um, I'm going to put that right there at three. And the reason I, I do that is I just want to give it some extra RAM because I've got it available on my system for when I'm using it just to keep that performance nice and healthy. Arguably, you could probably get away with two gig. It really depends what you plan on doing with inside the VM. Graphics, 64 meg for the memory, not great. Um, I'm going to go to auto recommended, so it's just going to decide for me uh, as needed uh, for the graphics here because, you know, if you're just doing terminal applications or things like that, you don't need that much. 
but maybe you're running some other software that's slightly more graphics intensive, so you might as well set that to auto. For resolution, I'm gonna leave it at scaled for now. You'll see what that means later on. I'll show you once it's up and running. Mouse and keyboard, gonna leave those alone. It's just gonna detect what I've got on the system. I'm gonna turn off printer sharing because I don't use it. If you, you wanna print under Linux, you may wanna turn that on. Uh, network, I'm gonna leave it alone. It's gonna use my host networking on my Mac here. Sound and camera, again, just gonna leave those alone. Actually, no, I'm gonna turn off the share Mac and camera with Linux. And USB on Bluetooth, I'm gonna leave those alone. Hard drives. Okay, so here you're gonna to wanna to make a change, possibly. And I say possibly, because it depends what you're gonna use the system for. You can see it's set for 64 gig here. Now, if I go to the advanced settings, and I go to properties, what you can do is you have this expanding disk. And what that means is it may not necessarily take up 64 gig of space or whatever this number here is in the size initially. This is the size that you're gonna allow it to expand to. So I'm actually gonna leave it at 64 gig. Actually, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put it up to 128. Now what that means is, okay, it's not gonna start at 128, but as I use it and I install applications and files, the size of the virtual machine file on my file system here for the Mac is going to expand. So it's not going to start at 128 gig. It'll allow it to go up to 128 gig. Okay, so I'm going to hit apply there. So you do want to make sure, and I'm just going to say, hey, it's going to resize here. If you've got some power failures, something like that could cause a problem. Well, I know from experience that this actually takes place really quickly, as you're about to see and I am running on my laptop, so I've got a fully charged battery as backup power just on the off chance that the power goes off. So I'll hit continue, and you can see it's already done. So it didn't take long. Okay, and I'll just go close. So that's one change you may wanna make there, and that's gonna, again, depend on what you intend to use the virtual machine for, right? Um, so if you was doing a server, for example, you may want to allow this to grow bigger, but you might be using it as a repository server, a file server, whatever it may be. Um, you may want to set that for more space. It's going to depend on your needs. CD and DVD, I'm going to leave this alone. Boot order, I'm going to leave this alone as well. This is fine. Initially, what it's going to do is, it's when I start it, it's going to boot from the ISO image that I've given it to make the install. That's what's going to happen here, so you'll see that. Now, security. Um, what I like to do with my VMs is actually isolate them from the host. For me, it's kind of part of the reason why I use VMs. So if I go back over here to options, you may remember on this sharing here, I was saying about just leaving this alone. Just make a note of what it is here. If I go back over to security and I say, okay, I wanna isolate now. So basically it's saying, look, you're not gonna share copy and paste. You're not gonna share folders, mounts, and everything else with your Mac. Perfect, that's exactly what I want. So I'm gonna isolate it there. If I go back over to options now, you're gonna see that this is all grayed out and it's real dark, difficult to see it here on this, this interface, but basically now it's saying, look, I'm not gonna share anything because you've isolated it. Perfect, it's exactly what I wanted. Uh, the rest of this, I'm gonna leave alone. No need to change any of the others here. And then back up, I'm just gonna leave that as it is. I have my Mac here set to not back up the folder because it takes up a lot of space and I independently back them up myself. So I don't need to worry about that here. So I'm just gonna leave that. I'm gonna close that. It's gonna, it'll show you the changes here, any changes that you've made. So you can see a slight increase in the memory, slight increase in disk space. And now I'm gonna go continue. And what it's gonna do now is it's gonna start installing Ubuntu Linux. It's going to reboot the VM and you can see it's going to sort of do a check here on the hard drive space. All right, so we've got no errors and now it's going to boot up the install assistant here for Ubuntu 2004. Okay, so there we go. So first thing it's doing is it's checking the ISO file to make sure everything's good. Um, this is what you would normally see if you was installing it on a machine. It's creating the file system here within the virtual machine. Okay, so now it's rebooting after it's finished the install here. Depending on your system, it may take a while this first time here as it's finishing up the install. It's probably gonna ask us some questions at the end of this and then uh, it'll be complete. All right, there we go. So 
It's now doing its final reboot. I'll just reposition the window here. Okay, so there we go. So it's essentially complete at this point. I'm going to click on the user here to, to log in. So I'm just going to put my password in. Hit return. And there you go. So technically we've finished the installation at this point, but we do have a couple of cleanup steps I like to do. So I'm just going to skip the online uh, Set, you know, setting up the accounts here. I'm just going to leave this all alone for now and just keep going next. Um, yep, I do want to send them information to help make it better because that's good for everybody. Location services, I don't need it, so I'm going to leave it turned off. It's going to tell me about some applications I can install, and I'm going to hit done. So we actually now have the full operating system here. Notice that we've got the two drives mounted still that we just used for the install. We don't need those, and I like to clean this sidebar up a little bit. So I'm just going to right click here and say remove from favorites. I'm going to remove a few of these to clean it up. Okay, there we go. So it's also got the tools installed, the parallel tools. So we've got the performance that we need. And I want to show you now, you know, I can take this window. And part of the reason for installing these tools is if I, if I drag and resize the window here, it's going to resize the desktop. And, you know, notice that I can you know, make this window any size I want. And that's that's part of the beauty of those tools. It's found some update packages, some small updates by the look of it since that ISO file was made. I'm just going to tell it to go ahead and install those. It's going to ask me for my password again. Okay, those are just installing. While it's doing that, I just want to show you, you know, performance is, is fantastic, right? If I click on here to show applications, you'll see, I mean, there's no, you know, you wouldn't, probably you know that you're in a VM here. I'm sure someone out there is going to say I would know, but okay. But you can see that the performance is really good. It's not sluggish in any way, right? I mean, granted, I'm running this on a fast machine, but still the performance is amazing when you think about the configuration that we set up with just a few, you know, a few gig of RAM and everything else. I mean, it's really performance is just great, right? You can certainly use this VM for anything you're going to need it for. All right, what I'm going to do here while that's doing there, I'm just going to eject these ISO files because we don't need them anymore. And we are, you know, we're essentially done here. Let me show you, you know, obviously the internet is working as you can tell because we're getting these updates here. But I'll just show you the performance. I'll open up Firefox. And I'll just put in my website here just to show you that it's going to load up. There you go. We've, so we've got a fully working internet connection. Everything's fine there. We'll just close that. Okay, so now with those updates completed there, what I'm going to do is going to restart it to show you how quickly uh, it will now boot up this VM, right? So I'm just going to go restart now. And also notice that I can move my mouse in and out of the VM without having to click, right? So I can just move it over here. If I right click, I'm seeing my Mac. And then if I move back in here, I've got the VM. So it's just nice. You can seamlessly move between the two. All right, and there we go. And it's it's back and rebooted. So that gives you an idea of how quickly the VM works. What I can do now is I'm just going to um, log in here again just to make sure that everything is complete. But we should be finished here. From here, I can install any applications or anything else I want. Of course, that's going to depend very much on what you want to use it for, right? Um, I'm just going to go here and I'm just going to type shutdown just to shut it down completely. I'm going to power it off. Yep, that's what I want. And you can see here it is on the list. Now, once you've got it there, if you want to, you know, you can turn it on and off from here. If you want to change the configuration at all again, you can just click on those, you know, the gear there and you can go in and make changes if you want. So if you find you need to give it more RAM or more CPUs, you can go in and make those changes. Some changes you can make while it's running, obviously. Um, I always recommend powering it down before you make those changes, especially with hard drive space. But other than that, we are done here. So that's a Parallels virtual machine with Ubuntu 2004. Uh, In fact, let me just connect, correct the name there, Ubuntu 2004 LTS. There we go. So that's it, we are done. Hope this video was helpful. Uh, let me know in the show notes. If you have any questions, I'll try and answer them. 
um, you know, like, subscribe, share it with friends. And uh, let me know if you, you know, there's other OSs that you're looking to have set up here. Uh, I may do one on Windows if you're interested or, you know, like an Ubuntu or Linux server, whatever. Um, just let me know. And that's it.